You can see this is the this is the ruin of the old village. It's pretty cool actually. I mean we're on our way to uh, to find TVs and just pass by these places. Pretty cool. People don't live here anymore. Uh, they all moved uh, a little to where closer to where we were. Uh, but this is the ruin of the old village. This is like some kind of ginger. I would hope to just chew on one. It's so strong. <laughs> I don't know why I'm chewing one. It's like super, super like ginger spicy and very, very salty. Like I'm eating salty salt. And it's dry, it's chewy. It has a weird sour taste. I do not know why. It's a true one, and I just start chewing one. It's not pleasant. This is how to eat. This is how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But this is how to do it. What? So this is a, a little very tiny, a few uh, tea trees in the Kimen area. Now Kimen, uh, uh, I would say, uh, has a very rich history uh, because the, rich, the history of Kimen is relatively recent. So there are a lot of records uh, about it. It's, it's not like uh, some other historical tea uh, in the old times. A lot of them are just folklore versus the actual historical record. Now, what makes Kimen, Kimen such a, such a uh, unique aroma is uh, the actual uh, tea variety. Uh, it's called Chuye. Uh, supposedly, they're all Chuye, but when I look at them, uh, I do see that they take sort of like different shapes, uh, not exactly all the same. Uh, so I'm, I'm not 100% sure about it. Also, Chuye is a very unique variety. It's uh, supposed to um, look the best when you actually make it uh, into red tea. Uh, when you read the uh, Tibao chemistry books, Shuye is uh, used as an excellent example for uh, the relationship between varietals and, the, uh, and the, the kind of tea you make it into. But for some reason, uh, uh, and, and I'm not sh exactly sure about the history of Shuye, because supposedly somebody brought some tea leaves from, uh, uh, tea seeds from uh, outside the Kimen area to plant it here uh, back in the 1800s, and that's uh, what gives Kimen all these teas. However, uh, if they actually plant it with seeds, how do you stabilize the varietal? That's a, a question that uh, I haven't yet found a good answer about. Um, and uh, supposedly, you know, overwhelming uh, the majority of the, the, the tea trees here are all tree but even though when I look at them, they don't look exactly the same. So let's see, this one, see, it has a very long shape like this, right? And this one is a little rounder. See, they have their different proportions. That's very important. Proportions that tells you the, the, the you know the the first look of a varietal. Of course, uh, the most important thing is the the edge. This is the fingerprint of the tea trees. But even by looking at this, you know they're not the same. Uh, now, um, to look at what we bump into. This is the, this is the the, the local uh, um, what is it called? Uh, this is called red flag, uh, number one, <laughs> because this is uh this is a old uh, communism base. So it's a uh, has a lot of uh, these kind of names for for stuff, not just tea trees. Uh, but this is basically one of the um, uh, the clone teas. The one of the uh, it's still you know they usually use lip loaf of varietals to develop them in labs. Uh, as you can see, that uh, it definitely takes a different look than those. You know, this is also one. It's uh, it's more like a single bush, and it buds very evenly. This one has already been picked, yeah, and this one hasn't been picked yet. See, it buds very evenly. Uh, it's a, they they call the um, they call it the excellent varietals. Uh, it's a it's a collective name. It's so huge. It buzz really big and it's really huge. And now this is the original variety. You can see they're all like 
round kind of shape. Usually when you see the round shapes, they're the original variety. When it's like a very upshoot kind of, uh, upward kind of feeling, it's the new varietals. So this is a new varietal and you can see it's so huge. Uh, oops. See the difference? Very small, um, very hairy and uh, uh, greener, very yellow, big, uh, kind of wavy. Yeah, so the I was told that the um the Chinese varietal usually, you know, the leaves is a little bigger, even though it's still bush tea, but it's a little bigger than the regular small leaf variety. And then uh the butt usually is a little longer, you know, sometimes uh, it's longer than the leaf. And uh, it doesn't it doesn't uh hug the, the, the butt. Uh, yeah, so uh, he was telling me that their tea can the butt can grow this big and yet the leaf hasn't uh, uh leave the, the butt yet and once you leave the butt uh, it uh, falls backward like this. Uh, but there are many teas actually falls backward like this. And this is uh, actually uh, uh, considered more desirable kind of leaves. Sometimes the leaves goes this word, that goes uh, forward. Mm. Mm. So this is the fresh leaves that we collected today. Uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, the wilting channel that uh, is very typical for uh, making red tea nowadays. And uh, you want to spread out the tea leaves more or less evenly to make sure that uh, it does not trap the heat. I don't know if because the weather here is definitely a little hotter than the, the other tea regions we have been to or uh, what, uh, because according to books, uh, this particular variety of uh, ferments a little faster as well. The enzyme is a little more active. <laughs> I thought it was a bug. <laughs> um, actually, the when I touch it here, it's already kind of hot. This is the center of the bag, so I want to make sure I flip it down a little bit to does not let the heat trap the tea. You want the heat to distribute evenly. See, some of the leaves already turn red. This is already turning red. It's very fast. Uh, one year uh, when I was ah. Uh, we're gonna try a batch with sun wilt. For our request, we're gonna sun wilt some tea as well. And uh, now this is uh, this is like in the old times. Uh, right now the, it's about 4 in the afternoon, 
I actually do not know the exact time, but from the sun, I'm guessing it's uh, uh, four or late, later. Uh, so the sun is not that strong, so we do not have to worry about uh, the sun killing the leaves. Sometimes uh, when the sun is really, really strong, uh, we need to uh, almost rescue the tea. It takes only a few minutes for the leaves to get burned. Now, uh, we want to wilt the tea till uh, the, uh, the elasticity of the tea starts to show up. So basically, when the, uh, the stems become unbreakable, that's when you uh, know the wilting is done. The sun wilt tea will be so much better than the channel, than the wilting channel. So we see that this is a batch of the leaves that uh, we were sun wilt earlier and uh, it's uh, it's pretty soft now. We might want it to uh, leave it for a little longer, but you want it to be soft enough so you can roll it without breaking the leaves, right? Uh, of course, my hand is softer than the machine and it's mostly green, right? It's soft and wilt. Now this, so we just move it there to uh, use it as a placeholder. Now this, on the other hand, is uh, uh, channel wilted. You can see all these uh, dark color ones. These are dead leaves. This is what adds to uh, the overall bitterness and uh, unpleasantness of the leaves. So you can totally see the difference, right? Uh, I mean, I would say about like 30% of the leaves here are that. And when I touch it, you can hear by the sun. Can you hear it? It is not soft, right? You can hear it's, it's dry. It has that sound to it. And then versus over here, I hope the camera captured the sound. It does not have that sound. And I cannot even describe to you the difference of the smell. So uh, you know what this is? This is like a very uh, um, uh, early version of the tea rolling machine. It's completely made of wood. And uh, of course it rolls very small batch at a time. Uh, it's a, it was probably about like a, a pound of uh, fresh leaves. You uh, 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 you gotta do this. But remember, before this, you use your feet to uh, to roll the tea. So this is already a big improvement. And now uh, the newer version is like uh, uh, the newer version. Oh, and this is uh, this is what? This is <laughs> and uh, see, this is the modern version, powered by electricity. It's much bigger, the new machinery. Uh, but it's basically the same concept, and then the, uh, the electricity will power that it's rolling like this. And it still is gridded. Uh, and it's actually, oh, this is the moody. The it's good because copper is really um, more desired for tea than other metal, and this is wood. I, I like this. This is the the best, I would say, uh, machine, rolling machine material I've seen. Usually it's like this. And the little uh, metal. Usually it's metal. Of course, this is much easier to maintain. Wood is not very easy to maintain. <laughs> so uh, basically, uh, I'm using this uh, very ancient uh, machine. This is from the 50s. Actually, in tea museum, you, st uh, you see people start using this uh, at the beginning of uh, uh, last century already. This kind of mechanic machine. I'm obviously not fast enough, so that's why I'm getting help. And uh, uh, it's uh, only rolling like one pound of tea at a time. Uh, it has a bamboo grid on it. Now the, so you can see the bamboo grid here. And uh, over here, you, this is where you push the tea down. You can see the tea is rolling down there. You gotta press it down so uh, it keeps it in the ball shape. Oops, <laughs> there we go. Uh, and uh, you can hear the, uh, so you need to roll this for half an hour and now you understand why we use Machineries. Behind me, you can see the modern machine uh, rolling the tea with electricity power, and now this is all manpower. I feel we should uh, start uh, 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 adopting this in the uh, uh, gyms in New York City. I think this is very good exercise, <laughs> and you're actually creating something. So, we're actually uh, test making teas right now. So, uh, over here, we 
have a batch of the uh, all three batches we're doing on this tray right now are all um, uh, channel welted. Uh, however, this is the one batch that was, uh, remember, so this is the original batch, right? I was saying that there's black ones and there are the green ones, dead leaves and the green ones. So this is, we pick out the non-dead leaves, the green ones, that we use that machine to roll first, and then now we're hand rolling it just to make sure it's rolled completely. And then this is the picked out black ones. And then what I'm rolling right now is our original one that's mixed. And uh, we're also going to make a batch that was sand wilted. Uh, but it's, uh, it was uh, wilted on the ground, so it has received the heat from the ground. So uh, uh, it's uh, wilted more thoroughly by now. Uh, versus uh, there's also a batch that wilted on the bamboo sheet, but this is, uh, because it's cooler, so it takes much longer for it to wilt. Uh, I'm not sure if we're able to do that batch yet tonight, but definitely the, uh, the batch that's been uh, uh, sun wilting on the ground. It smells really, really good right now. And even by now, the rope is completely different. And uh, so we're testing them, and uh, I will report the results in a few hours. <laughs> a little red teas into the uh, fermentation room. There we go. So the tea leaves are all wet. You can see. It's all wet. 哎呀，这个成球了呀，没打碎它。嗯，嗯，对。所以it's uh, sometimes it not up and then uh, need to break it. So we put it into the fermentation room. Now this is a little, uh, you know, modified room. So uh, they actually have a, a tube that sends steam inside because you need to have controlled. Uh, um, temperature and uh, moisture. Um, now we've seen many different versions of it. They have actually machines that directly controls uh, temperature and fermentation, uh, temperature and moisture. This basically, uh, it doesn't allow you uh, to have a dial to control it. Uh, it's definitely not a digital channel uh, panel. It's just, it's just a steam pipe. And then, uh, so you just have to con uh, control the steam yourself and then uh, at the monk friend's place, you see him basically just put in a bucket of uh, hot water and then covered the... Uh, he didn't even have a room, he built a shack and covered it with uh, plastic. Uh, you hear it? You hear the steam? It's a little too dark. Yeah. And we're gonna leave it overnight. Uh, uh, I mean, when I say overnight, it's already past midnight. We're gonna get up around five, and I want to show you this is how we do uh, in the old times without uh, a fermentation room. This is the little batch of tea we're testing. This is hand rolled. Uh, it's basically we just put it close to uh, a heat source, not too close, because you want to give it enough uh, uh, time for it to ferment. You don't want it to ferment too fast. So right now it's about uh, six in the morning. Uh, we got up at 5.30. Now this is on this chair, the ones that were wilted, uh, uh, we leave it at room temperature to ferment. It's a little dry. Uh, now this is the, the this is the brightest. This is the sun wilted batch. Uh, these three are channel wilted, but these are picked out that's uh, uh, the leaf haven't, hasn't died yet. This has some dead leaves in there, like during the fermentation. Uh, if you watched yesterday's review, you know what I mean by dead. Uh, this is the mixed batch. This is what they usually do. Uh, and this is also the room fermented one. You can see it is much darker. Here we have the other uh, sun wilted batch. It's a little too dry. Uh, that's what I was afraid yesterday. It did not soft enough. The bench would keep drier. Uh, I had the idea of going with it yesterday. The aroma is also not as good as last night. This is a sun wilted batch. The one on the tray is this one. I had an idea of uh, uh, power it up a little thicker yesterday to uh, let the moisture come out. Uh, it was not adopted, so it's a little dry. Uh, 